If you are a fan of all things horror, you should watch Sea Slugs in action. These creatures can chop off their heads and regrow the rest of their body. Sounds disturbing, right? The sight was unsettling for the researchers who observed the stunt as well. How do these slugs manage to decapitate themselves? We will tell you that in a bit. I am Nidhi Kumar and you are watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science has to offer from interesting developments to futuristic solutions. This week we will discuss the slug's head chopping skills, scientists growing embryos in an artificial womb and stimulating cells to cry in the lab. Let's get started. Alicia marginita. This is the name of the sea slug species pulling off the head chopping stunt. A researcher named Sayaka Mito spotted this stunt in a lab raised sea slug. She found the creature's body less head moving around feasting on algae. Recounting the experience, Mito told the New York Times that it looked like the sea slug seemed okay without the body. Other animals are also capable of doing this to an extent. Lizards, for instance, can regrow their tails. This process of getting rid of parts of the body and regrowing them is called autotomy. But none of this can compare to the sea slug. These creatures shed their whole body and regrow the lost parts, including the heart digestive system. In less than a month, if you recall, Mitho caught the head eating algae. This begs the question, how does it gain energy without a digestive system to break down the food? According to the researchers, the creature could be gaining energy from photosynthesis occurring in cells in their feast, algae. Now moving on to what drove the sea slugs to decapitate themselves in an experiment the researchers observed that creatures infected with parasites were undergoing autotomy, leading to a theory that parasites could be to blame for the extreme reaction. What was more surprising was that the discarded body continued to survive for months before it was decomposed. Watch how it responded when the head encountered the separated body. The researchers think the sea slug's ability is remarkable. I'm sure you agree as well. And our next story could raise some ethical questions as well. Recently, researchers from Israel announced that they have successfully regrown a mouse embryo outside a living womb in what they call a mechanical or artificial womb. This development is a big deal because so far researchers have been able to grow fertilized eggs for a short period before implanting them into a uterus. Here, researchers removed the embryos from mice's uterus at five days of gestation and grew them for six days in artificial wombs. Gestation is a period marking the development of an embryo just after fertilization. And inside a female, you must be wondering what the artificial womb is. Well, it is a glass jar equipped with nutrients to boost growth. It is connected to a ventilation system that provides oxygen and carbon dioxide to the embryo. According to the New York Times, the ventilator also controls the concentration of gases, gas pressure and the chamber's flow rate. After six days of development in the artificial chamber, the researchers then compared growth in the embryos with those that grew in mice's living womb and they found no difference between the two. The researchers managed to develop an embryo up to day 11, halfway through the pregnancy that lasts 20 days. This development could help researchers understand more about the reasons behind miscarriages and how mutations affect an embryo. Next, the team hopes to build an artificial womb that can support the embryo for the entire gestation period. If they succeed, this hope that scientists might be able to grow human embryos outside the living uterus, quite exciting indeed. And our next story is also equally exciting. Scientists have successfully managed to get cells growing in the lab cry. Yes, you heard it right. Scientists got lab-grown cells to tear up. Most of us associate tears with emotions, but they're more than that. Tears play a role in moisturizing and protecting our eyes. Dry eyes can increase the chances of infection and inflammation. We don't want that, do we? In fact, there's a condition called Sjogren's syndrome, which affects the tears and salivary glands and causes dry eyes and mouth. 
here researchers grew tear gland organoids in the lab. Now organoids are mini versions of organs grown in the lab. They can be used to screen drugs that might affect tear production and treat dry eyes. Tear glands are found inside the upper lids above each eye. They are challenging to study because experts can only extract them in tiny amounts. Do you see this image? It shows the tear glands swelling up with tears. If the organoids had ducts, they would be more tears, the researchers believe. When transplanted into mice, the team saw the formation of duct-like structures. With this, the team hopes to gain more insights into tear production. They hope that organoids could be used as transplants to replace diseased or damaged tear glands. This is something to look forward to indeed. And with that, friends, this is a wrap of this edition of Science Time. Stay with us every Friday at 9 p.m. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar.